Welcome to Women's Footy. Thanks to NAB, I am joined today by Demon Superstar and two-time All-Australian. Welcome, Libby Birch. Thanks for having me back. Thank you very much for joining us. If you guys want to follow us on socials, you can do so on Twitter and Instagram at Women's Footy AFL to stay up to date on all the women's footy news and action. Let's kick things off with the round five results now. Uh, the Bulldogs played the Dockers on Tuesday night and uh, the Dockers had quite a convincing win there. Uh, the Cats v the Eagles on Friday night and the Cats got up in a thriller by three points. And then yesterday, the Lions absolutely pumped Collingwood and the Demons live. Got up in the end there, held on against the Gold Coast Suns. It was absolutely a fantastic effort out there at Casey Fields. Let's get stuck into our news headlines for Nilex, the experts in watering. So the Ds overcame uh, uh, another first quarter slow start to run over the top of the Suns yesterday at a very windy night at Casey Fields. Yeah, it was terrific to be back on our home turf, a fortress for us. And I think it was great to see that we could bounce back uh, from that disappointing loss against Adelaide last week and really show some promising signs heading into the last five games of the home and away season. Now, the Suns, uh, the Suns found the lead with the opening goal of the game in the second quarter, uh, but the Ds kicked at the first, the next four goals. It was a huge effort. Again, slow start, but you guys seem to really be able to pick up and find another gear after that. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're starting to trust our process a little bit more, and it was fantastic to see our fundamentals and something that we really pride ourselves on, which is our, our pressure at the footy, uh, was really, really lifted this week with 26 inside 50 tackles compared to one or two last week. So a massive, massive change, uh, and great to see some great results uh, on the scoreboard as well. And a huge game for Lauren Pierce as well, who had game highs in both disposals. She had 20 disposals and 20 hit outs as well. Um, you know, the Ds are without midfielders uh, Tyler Hanks and Maddie Gay, um, but had even contributions from Pierce, Zanka, Lampard, Paxi and Mithin as well. Yeah, absolutely. Laura has just been terrific. She just adds, she's almost like another midfielder. Yeah. She had seven clearances last night. Super strong over the ball, as you can see here. And getting a handball out to the outer layer, which is just terrific. And she was enormous uh, with intercept marks last night and she was a huge presence in the ruck. So uh, she's just been an absolute weapon for us over the last couple of seasons. And I think with those two key midfielders missing, Hanksy and Matty Gay, it was pivotal for Loz to have a huge impact. And I think she did that. And we've touched on this a little bit before. There is huge depth in the in the D's midfield. Uh, is that something that's always been there, or is it just coming to light now because of you know injuries, COVID protocols, and that kind of thing? I, I honestly think it's been there for a long time, and that's something that Melbourne has really. Uh, pride itself on is, is having that depth in the list and you know we're only just starting to see it now because of these unfortunate I guess opportunities that, that are occurring for players to come in and out and I think it's just a real strength of, of Melbourne to know that we have players that can come in and make it an immediate impact. Yeah and as we know it was it was a very windy night it was. at Casey. My hair was blowing everywhere. <laughs> Um, it, does that suit you as a defender? Do you like playing that? Because you do tend to read the ball really well, Lynn. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> thank you, no. You're, you're fantastic, <laughs> you had a great day. No, no, no. Uh, we love it down there. Yeah. Uh, as we noticed in the warm-up that we, were, we really had to... The wind was blowing right across the ground to the broadcast side. And if you position yourself well, uh, you've got a head start on your opponents. And because we've trained there all pre-season, it gives us a huge advantage. And on to the Brisbane match now. It was uh, similarly windy conditions uh, out there, but they managed to absolutely annihilate the Pies. Yeah, it was just, it's, it was sparks of the reigning premiers coming back yeah. after a couple of, I guess, really tough weeks for Brisbane uh, with COVID protocols, injuries. I just, I just thought I saw a glimpse of that premiership team that we saw last year. They're just dominant around the footy. And as you can see here, Collingwood were really wasteful with their inside 50 opportunities, but Brisbane just so composed with the footy. 
Yeah, and, and we can see this here. You know, Brit, uh, Collingwood just sort of were blazing away, yep. just trying to get it into their 50, whereas uh, Brisbane were really sort of lowering the eyes and able to, to hit targets inside 50s. Do you reckon that was the difference between the two teams? Yeah, absolutely. And this game was all about with the wind particularly, it's almost four quarters, four different games. Yeah. And you've got different scenarios that you practice at training. But, for example, in that first quarter, Collingwood had... They scored zero with the wind. Yeah. And then Brisbane had the opportunity in the second and they kicked three goals too. So yeah. pretty much that's the game over yeah. right there. So if you don't use the wind right and the conditions, uh, it really puts you on the back burner in the last couple of quarters of the game. Yeah, and the, the Magpies only managed one goal for the whole game. Um, you know, are they going to move anywhere getting those kind of results? No, like we've seen in the last two weeks that Collingwood have really, really struggled up forward. And particularly with their ability to, to transition the ball from their midfield into their forward line. You're looking at some stats here, but this year they're, they're down about 10 points a game. Yeah. Uh, and inside 50s are down about 10 again. Uh, and Mark's inside 50 and that's all they like they were such a powerhouse in 2021 and they were that was their highest scoring year that they were able to score uh, so, some huge points some huge goals throughout every match and they're really struggling without Bree Davey uh, and they've had uh, some huge losses uh, over the last couple of weeks with you know key key players and coaches parting ways with yeah. the club um, what are your thoughts on Sabrina Frederick? Is she doing enough for what she was, you know, hired for, basically? Yeah, I think Sabs, she's obviously her first year at Collingwood and as you can see here by her stats, she was pivotal at the Brisbane Lions uh, in 17 and 18 and then obviously went to Richmond and now at Collingwood. And I think that she has just been super strong, you know, in those first couple of years. But because the forward structure at Collingwood is suffering at the moment, I don't yeah. think she's getting the ball uh, use and, the, and I guess the ball delivery that she requires. Yeah. And you think maybe they're relying on her too much to do all the work with the kind of deliveries that are coming forward? Yeah, they had a bit of an exodus of key forwards in 2019 Collingwood and they haven't really been able to recover that and I think there's 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 a lot falling on Frederick and as you can see here she she just looks like she's lacking confidence and and she's not launching for the football as a key forward you really want to bash packs and fly through the air and just get the ball to ground and I think that that's missing from her game at the moment but that's not to say that she can't you know in football a week's a long time and that's what we always say and so she can she can bounce back just as quickly and um also with Collingwood, they've also lost uh, midfield coach uh, Scott Gowans to Sydney and Ash Brazzle. See you later. Yeah. Going back to the Diamonds. Do you reckon that's going to affect them? Huge, huge. I think, as I've, as I've said over the pre previous weeks, I think for Collingwood, there's just been a few emotional losses. Like yeah. uh, Bree Davey, huge. Captain of the club, massive in the midfield. Emotional loss. Yeah. Uh, again, Ash Brazzle, she's been a key component of their back line and I guess a, a huge leader of the club, not only in her netball career but football career. So that's another, you know, emotional loss. And, and Scott, the, the assistant coach, the midfield coach, off to Swans, congratulations to him. But just a, another sort of kick to the guts for yeah. Collingwood. And especially with those midfield stats that we, we saw moments ago, do you, do you think that's really going to hit him, like losing the midfield coach? Yeah. You know? Well, you lose Bree Davey and then you lose the midfield coach. It's 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 leaving a few holes for sure. Uh, so Collingwood are going to have to try and fill those gaps over the next couple of weeks. And we're not expecting big changes. Yeah. You know, you can't expect big changes over the next couple of weeks, but just a small small steps every week because yeah. they have been, I guess you could say, a little bit gutted by injuries yeah. and uh, you know key stakeholders of the club leaving. And we've been very critical on Collingwood, but let's have a light spot for them now. A bright spot, I should say. 19-year-old Eloise Chaston kicked a, like a goal of the year contender. Let's have a look at this. Spins around, bang. What I loved about this was just uh, Chaston's defensive effort there. A, a spoil uh, and just 
ability to have the class to finish in front of goal for such a young player. The spin on her and what an angle to kick it from. Yeah. And she loved it too. She loved she? it. She was getting it. She's Good like, on we're her. on here. Let's go. Come on. Let's on lift. Her. And some of the younger players, that's that's what they bring to teams. Yeah. That's, that's great from Eloise there. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. Let's move on now to the Geelong Thriller. Down oh, how good was that? Oh, it was good. You love to see it, <laughs> don't love you? Love it. <laughs> um, so West, West Coast hit the front with just over two minutes to go, but Geelong were able to hit back, giving the Cats their first win and leaving West Coast still winless in this season. Yeah, well... <sighs> It was a thriller, wasn't it? And it's the, sort of the first one, th first thriller game that we've seen. One thing that comes to mind straight away, Bryony, is that Geelong had an opportunity to win in a thriller last week. Yeah. Uh, with Chloe Shear just missing that goal out in front. But this week they capitalised and Maloney, 19-year-old from Colac, kicked the winner. And I just think that shows their growth this season. And it's not only being able to finish in front of goal, but they've been oh, 61 tackles a game that they've been averaging... They've been really strong, particularly their midfield. And Georgie press Parkas as well. She had 15 disposals, uh, sort of showing why she was uh, pick number two last year. This yeah, year, sorry. absolutely. And, you know, she's got pretty good DNA in Maddie press Parkas, <laughs> that's for sure. But just a really slick competitor and perfect ground ball. Great movement there. And she's just going to be a star of, star of the show for years to come and really, really pivotal player for Geelong, particularly in that midfield and, and up forward presence. And do you think there's some little hints of uh, Maddie's game in Georgie or do you think that they're totally they're separate in their own players? I, I think Georgie would like to think that she's a separate player to, uh, to Maddie and I think that we owe them both the respect of, of giving them their own opportunity to flourish in the game. But I do have to say, you know, growing up with obviously Maddie and uh, Georgie being sisters, I think that Georgie would have looked up to Maddie yeah. Uh, a lot and sort of mirrored some of her game on, on Maddie and probably vice versa over the years to come. So, yeah, it's very exciting to have the sisters playing, you know, for Carlton and Geelong and a really special part of history. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one other thing is now West Coast now have a three-day turnaround to play their rescheduled round four match against St Kilda on the 8th of Feb. Um, here's what West Coast... West Coast coach uh, Michael Pryor had to say when asked about the three-day turnaround. Well, it's purely going to be recovery for our girls, so we'll just we won't train. Uh, we'll go for a walk maybe on the Monday before the Tuesday game, but we won't train. Um, we'll recover in the next two days um, and up against St Kilda, which is a game that we'll be in. So they're just going to go for a walk, Lib. They're going to like take a little bus around the tan <laughs> and see how they go. How would you guys tackle it at Melbourne with the three games? Yeah, I, I don't think he's been too descriptive there, but uh, it definitely will be a little bit more than just a walk. I think recovery is super important. West Coast have played a lot of games in a short amount of time, considering that they have also been very sick from COVID. So I think it will be, uh, it'll be a walk, lots of recovery, but I would dare say that there will be a short skill session just with the footies, not too much running, just to get their hands on the ball again before uh, that match. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough because they'll head back soon to, to WA and, and they've been, you know, hubbing in Victoria yeah. for, for nearly four weeks now. So yeah. good on Fremantle and, and West Coast for, for taking that, I guess, for the league and, and yeah. to make sure that we can continue to play. And really taking it in their stride as well. Um, so there's obviously the long-standing injury concerns in the women's game. Um, do you think it's reckless of the league to fixture games so close together now? Look, I think there's two points here. We, we, we play the games, you know, we try and fit them in and we get the season done. Yeah. Uh, in the time that we thought we would. Yeah. And then the second part to that is we're putting our players under so much stress. Yeah. And that's not only the fact that, you know, we've got teams hubbing, but we're in heat, we're in the middle of summer, we uh, were short turnarounds for games... Uh, you know, we're, we're working full-time, yep. we're, we're under the pump. Yep. So I think there's two parts to this, but we have to really think about how, you know, how we actually manage a season like this. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's, it's untrying times. Because you know? you've, you've had the alternative, haven't you? You've yeah, had where we've you had a season where we season. haven't finished and yeah. that was so empty and yeah. unfulfilling yeah. and we definitely don't want that again. But it's definitely something that... Uh, is uh, needs to be continually managed, I would say. Yeah. And the players' best interest needs to be at heart. Because is the Players Association um, consulted on these kind of decisions? And, you know, is there a chance where they can intervene and try and make changes to this fixture? Yeah, 
uh, the AFL Players Association does a great job for us and they're always the first to consult with changes and news and things like that and, and they look after us very well. But I think, you know, it's also up to us to voice how we're feeling. Uh, yeah. and, and that's probably something that we, we don't do enough and because we're so grateful to be playing the game uh, and, and have the opportunity to play. So I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's just been a really tough time for everyone. Yeah, some great insights there, Lib. Thank you. All right, well, that was the news headlines. Thanks to Nilex. Recycled water hoses, water like a Nilex expert, available at Bunnings. Melbourne's Eliza McNamara up after the break. Well, welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB, who are giving away $10,000 to a local footy club. All you need to do is scan the QR code on your screen right now uh, or visit nab.com.au slash footy is back to enter. Well, we have a Melbourne superstar <laughs> on the line right now. Welcome to Eliza McNamara via Zoom. How are you doing, Eliza? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good. Do I need to introduce you to my co-host today? Have you two met each other? <laughs> Hi, Lizzie. Um, just briefly, I think. <laughs> Libby, is it? Yeah, it's, yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you, Lizzie. Hey, I'm it must have been uh, really good to get on the scoreboard this week. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. It was, uh, yeah, pretty exciting to get on this week. Yeah. You've had a terrific start to the year, Lizzie. I guess after unfortunately missing the first round with uh, health and safety protocols, but a fantastic finish here by you. How you're obviously an elite runner in the competition and in our team, but being a first year player last year, what was your goal heading into this season? I think last year I came in and like my mind was just chaotic. Like it's so overwhelming and there's just so much to learn and take in, whether it be like connecting with the girls, but also understanding how the game really steps up when you get to AFL level and then how important it is to really have uh, kind of honed in your fundamental skills and not just bomb it forward because that was kind of what I relied on at NAB League was just kicking it forward into space. So I think last season, yeah, it was just finding the balance of how can I develop on field but also really connect with the girls because I find naturally like the more connected you are with the girls and the more you relate and kind of get to know each other, it's just easier to then have that transfer onto the field. So that was one of my huge goals last year. And then in the off season, I guess, I was able to really hone in on my personal skills and working with Mick on my kicking and ground balls a lot in order to like uh, avoid getting concussed and simple <laughs> things like that. Just technique that you don't really learn until you get really into the higher standards. So yeah, that was probably my main goal was yeah, executing fundamentals and just getting my technique right, whether that being kicking or ground balls. Yeah, I know that I'm biased, but you are an absolute legend and you are a great young emerging player and uh, an awesome friend as well. I, I did want to ask, you did get yourself in a bit of a sticky situation <laughs> over the last two weeks. Can you tell us and uh, the audience a little bit about that? <laughs> Well, it's just so random. Like two weeks ago, I was walking across the ovals near my house and I was wearing my Birkenstock and this stick kind of scuffed up the top of the Birkenstock and scraped my foot. But I just pulled it out, thought nothing of it. And then on Monday this week, so two weeks later, I woke up at 1am and my foot was throbbing and I had this stabbing pain up my leg. And it was just like this huge infection in my foot. So we got on top of it on Thursday at training and come game day, all the pain had subsided. But, yeah, it was just more of a laugh than anything. Like, who knows what was on that stick and what, what's in my foot. But, you know, it's done now. So I'm going to call you sticky from now on. Eliza McNamara, who knows what was on that stick? <laughs> <laughs> you could say. Now, Liza, it was a windy game out there yesterday. Uh, we spoke to Olivia a little bit earlier about how... Uh, you know, how that is as a defender. How do you find it as a defender and um, and playing with a win, such a strong win like at Casey Fields last night? 
Um, personally, I really struggle with the wind because like I need optimal conditions to execute my kicking. So the wind is just not ideal. But um, I think the girls, we've really trained through it and are slowly adjusting to the temperamental conditions at Casey. You can't really predict how it's going to be, but I think the wind didn't really play as large of a factor as it had recently. And I think that's kudos to the girls, just being able to overcome the conditions and just play our own type of footy and really get the job done. So, yeah, it's not too bad. And uh, I want to talk quickly about uh, Kalinda Howarth. Uh, she was uh, employed as a utility down back in the first half and then made her way forward in the second half. Um, did you expect to see her in, in the, the sweeper role yesterday? And, um, you know, both of you would have been near her as well, so I'd love to hear both of your experiences. Yeah, well, I'll jump in before Lizzie does, but I think they, they played us that spare behind the ball on us yeah. for the first couple of quarters and then Howarth moved up forward and, and kicked this goal on me, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but, no, she was, she was yeah, really, really great down back for them. And, Lizzie, what did you think from that wing position all night? Uh, they obviously had that spare, but it was quite difficult to, to move around their numbers. Yeah, no, it definitely was. And I think... Um to Kalinda's credit, she really executed both roles really well. Like in the defense, she was such a demanding presence and, you know, it was really a struggle for the forwards to get it in deeper and kick a goal from it. And then she slid into the forward line almost seamlessly and was able to execute that goal and rather sloppy defense, if I do say so. But um, no, I think... Did, did that's she kick it on you show, or like, Liv? You did the competition as though... No, Libby, definitely Libby. <laughs> She's so, she's so adaptable and able to just play footy, like, no matter what position yeah. it is. So I think, yeah, she really had quite a good game last night. Yeah, she did. All right, well, Taylor Harris has been incredible since making the move from Carlton, having already bagged nine goals in the first five games. She is our trade of the week. Thanks to Imar Insurance, the tradies mate. Yeah, Taylor has been incredible and I think that it is, at the D's, it's all about playing your role and we're not asking anyone to do anything special and I think Taylor's really fit into that in that she's just got so much uh, support around her, particularly with Daisy Pearce directing her and I, I think you heard it on the boundary line last night, Bryony. But, yeah, she's just an incredible athlete and, Lizzie, what have, what have you seen from Tay and, and what she's brought to this team? Yeah, well, just beyond, like, her athleticism, she's also just a wealth of knowledge in, like, the field of footy. Like, personally, she often is able to give me really kind of digestible tips and everything. Like, it might be as simple as just really when you're going up for a mark, watch it right in and don't let go until, like, you've seriously landed both feet. Mm. But also off the field, she just brings a lot of good energy and I think girls buy off that. And I think, Lib, you'll probably be able to speak better to this, but the defenders really benefit yeah. from playing on her in the preseason and having to shut down such a demanding forward. I think that was really quite a key asset to the development of the defenders as well. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Lizzie, and, and something that I, that I hadn't thought about too much, but she definitely pushed the defenders <laughs> over the preseason. <laughs> And because uh, she's just so talented in the air and yeah. you have to get better if you want to play on Taylor Harris. Yeah, one of those moments where you're like, I'm really glad she's on my team. Yes. <laughs> well, that was the Imar Insurance Trade of the Year nominee for round five. The Trade of the Year will win two and a half grand thanks to Imar. So get, online, get an online quote and instant cover anywhere, anytime. Visit imar.com.au. Well, Liza, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. You don't go home empty-handed, babe. We get lots of stuff to you. All the guests on Women's Footy take home a Samsonite luggage package where there's live sport. Samsonite is there too. For innovative travel and business solutions, visit samsonite.com.au. You're also going to get a Spinal Ease pillow. The best pillow in the world is at Spinal Ease ze.com.au and you also get a $50 McCafe gift card as well. Try the Aussie Angus Burger at Macca's today. That couldn't be any more perfect for Lizzie. A new pillow to sleep on and some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Love it. Thanks for joining us, Liza. Appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. Have a lovely day. All right. See you tomorrow night, Lizzie. Coming up next, Geelong captain Meg McDonald right after the break.
Uh, welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We're here at the McCafe. Try a deluxe iced coffee at McCafe today. We're also here with our wonderful barista, Nadia. Can I please have an almond latte, please? Here's one we prepared <laughs> So earlier. demanding. <laughs> All right, well, we have got Geelong superstar Meg McDonald on the line via Zoom. Meg, are you there? I'm here. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hey, it must have been so great getting the first win on the board for the season this weekend. Yeah, it was wonderful to get the first win on the board. I mean, we've been playing some good footy for the first four weeks and, you know, we haven't had a lot of wins as a team in the competition yet. So to finally get over the line was was wonderful. And, um, oh, there are the highlights. Great handball needs. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was really exciting for the um, really exciting for the group, despite perhaps not playing our best football throughout the game. And uh, how are you feeling when uh, Amy Schmidt kicked that goal with 90 seconds to go? Oh, I was on the I was on the bench. So I was running back out, going, "Oh, we've got to get the team up." Um, you know, but uh, we hadn't come back from that position before. We've lost some close games, and I knew that there were only you know 90 seconds to two minutes to go. So um, to get a clearance, to get Becky Webster to clear the ball like she did and, and get it in forward and then, you know, I've watched the replay of what happened from there many a times throughout, the, you know, since the game. So I, I, had my, I had my doubts with two minutes to go, but I think it shows enormous growth that we were able to, we were able to get the win. Yeah, absolutely, Megan. I'm really interested in, in understanding from your perspective as captain how the new coach, Dan, has, has really brought so much improvement from this group. And, uh, yeah, I'm really interested to see what he's brought to the Geelong Football Club. Yeah, I think it's partly down. It's partly, you know, the group itself and the staff around us. I mean, we all had areas to improve last year and we weren't satisfied with 2021. But Dan's been able to galvanise the group, get us all going in the same direction. And um, I think we're all really clear on our roles and what we value. And I think that's been evident in the way we've played. You know, we've played with some real, you know, high pressure, press, aggression. And we've really valued those, you know, those one percenters. And now it's a chance for us to improve on that and to start, um, you know, making our attack a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that we looked at this morning and we wanted to talk through you with was the just the improvement from a stats point of view, Meg. You know, as we see here, we're, the average margin has dramatically dropped. Points against has dramatically dropped. Tackles are up by a fair bit. And that's been something that I've been seeing with Geelong at the moment and, and your side. The defensive pressure across the whole ground has been huge. Has that been something that you've been focusing on during pre-season? Just being able to push up the ground and really put your opponents under pressure? Yeah, exactly exactly right, Libby. Um, you know, I think Dan modelled a game style based on what we were already good at. And we have some wonderful contested players. So we really valued, um, you know, being good in the contest and, and applying pressure and taking the opponent's game away from them. And, yeah, it was certainly a focus to play to play further up the ground. Um, so, you know, we've been valuing that over the preseason. We've continued to um, week in, week out. I know it's a cliche to say we're not measuring ourselves with wins and losses, particularly coming off um, an exciting win. But, you know, each week we've been getting back to, are we playing the percentage? Images of the footy game and are we you know are we pressuring the opposition um we've had success when we when we do that we went away from that a little bit at, at certain parts in the game on the weekends but um we were get, able to get back to it in the last two minutes and do you put it down much to the improvement of the midfield we saw um amy mcdonald has just pretty much picked up where she left off in 2021 she had 24 disposals against west coast it was a, a seven tackles as well as a huge effort yeah, and the tackles is what's so, is what's so in, impressive with Amy. And look, uh, we say she she puts oppos through the spin cycle like she did just there. Um, you know, her she wins balls that a lot of other people can't. And I know her contested numbers are through the roof, but she's now got people going with her and she's bringing her teammates into the game as well. I thought Becky Webster played an unbelievable game on the weekend. Um, we've got Nina back. You know, I could go on about the midfield. It's, um, you know, they're showing extraordinary growth. Uh, and, and they're the ones that I think have realised that, that they're who will, they are who will drive us to the next level as a team. Yeah. How good is it to have Nina back? I know that she had been absolutely pivotal in, in the earlier years, but just to have such a presence in the midfield back. But also I'd like to get your thoughts on Chantal Emerson coming across from Melbourne and also Chloe Shear from Adelaide. How have they added to your group? Yeah, well, firstly, Nina's, you know, I don't have enough wonderful things to say about Nina's, the way she's carried herself throughout, you know, 
the four years now. And it was only, I think, her 10th game on the weekend. So it's wonderful to have her back just because she provides so much leadership and she, she her leadership style is, you know, look how I do it, girls, and, you know, come with me. So it's awesome to have her back out there and then it helps that she's such a good ball winner and user. Um, you know, Shan has been wonderful for the group. She's, you know, she's a really skillful, classy player and she comes from your club, Libby, who's had a lot of success. So she knows how to win and I think that's that's important for us to learn as a group is how to get how to get over the line and then Chloe's you know I mean I could watch her kick all day and so um she's she's been it's been wonderful you know we're still working out how we kick the ball through the big sticks a little bit more often and she's certainly an avenue that we're we're happy to have um through to goal. And how are you feeling about Georgie Presparkas's uh, start to her AFLW career? Oh, I mean, she's she's special, and I, <laughs> I I remember when she got drafted, I was like, oh, you know, perhaps our midfield, it'll be great if she can get work her way into the midfield. Mm. Oh no, she's she was um straight in there and uh, started extraordinarily well against North, and you know she's had a couple of challenges since because, you know, she's easily her, her talent and her long sleeves are pretty easily recognisable. Um, <laughs> so I think she narrowed her focus again on the weekend and went back to um you know moving through stoppages really well and and that sort of contested work that we really value. So um it was great to see her play and really, really be pivotal for us in the first quarter on the weekend. And um, it's just a taste of what's to come as she continues to develop. And I'd love to um, quickly turn the focus to the article that you wrote during the week, Lib, um, about the, the Darabin Falcons and just the absolute footy factory that they have over there for producing talent for AFLW. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, well, well Meg was also a star of that side and, and it was just a really special time for women's footy. I know that we, we talk about the shiny product of AFLW, but we don't often talk about, you know, our history and where we've yeah. come from and some of the players that have really bred life into the sport and as you can see here the the amount of, of champions that have come from yeah. from this team is huge but the one that I think stands out to me is the leadership yeah. from this club and Meg Mac is one of those products in that she is the captain of the Geelong Football Club and you know a, a really pivotal leader for that group. Meg how was your time at Darabin and, and tell us you know it's it's you know, you, you would have loved it exactly the same as I would have, but we've got so many fond memories there, don't we? Oh, we absolutely do. I joke that I get, I get to do your first game, Liv, because I dislocated my finger the day before training. <laughs> this as I would have played with it. And Libby came into the team. <laughs> but and I wasn't getting back out after that. That's news to me, man. <laughs> you know I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, <laughs> no, and although I certainly wasn't... Um, uh, the footy player I like to think I am now, nor the leader when I was um, back at Darabin, but I, it's, it's where I learned, it's where I learned it all. And, um, you know, I just went down there to try and try a team sport and play some footy and um, to have the, the, you know, the pre-existing professionalism at that club and the sense of community and, um, you know, everyone who, who comes from Darabin speaks about how special the time it was and still can, and what a place it still continues to be for us. I think lots of players still try and go down and watch footy there. My little sister went to training there for the first oh. time during the week. Now it's really exciting. Shout out to Lucy. Um, oh, that's great. So it continues to be a wonderful club yeah. and somewhere where I think we continue to draw, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of warm fuzzies. So um, I'll try and get back down there soon. And I still think, you know, the things that I value, even at Geelong, the community-based yeah. club, you know, that comes that comes from um, playing at Darabin first and foremost. Thanks so much for joining us, Meg. It's been absolutely wonderful to chat with you. No, thank you both. Have a good Sunday. Thanks, Meg. Yeah. All right, we're going to look at Brisbane's big win after the break. Thanks to Brighton Homes. Let life in and let the good times begin. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB, supporting footballers from NAB, AFL, Auskick to the big time. Lib, I'm going to throw it over to you now for the analyzer for Pillar Products, Roller Blinds, exclusively at Bunnings. 
Well, we talked about the Brisbane Lions earlier on in the show and they were absolutely prolific and clinical when they were moving the footy from their midfield into their forward line. And they got so many marks inside 50, they got so many scoring shots and they lowered their eyes and found that kick, which was really, really important to suffocating Collingwood on the weekend. But what I want to look at is how they turn their defence into their offence so beautifully and so easily. And it really comes down to that wall they set up outside 50. And as you can see, the defenders read it early and they get it a rebound and they get it back in their inside 50 with some great ball movement and it's just something that we saw when they won that premiership they're just so strong and their ability to rebound from a defensive action into offense this one here a long kick outside 50 seven Brisbane players in great defensive position offering cover the wings are running back providing that extra level of depth intercept play here and just the quick turnaround, quick ball movement to really open up the ground to that open side. Really, really good stuff from the Brisbane Lions to turn their defence into offence. And Collingwood's defences just can't get set in this situation when they rebound so quickly. Absolutely, particularly when an intercept comes and the ball is moved so quickly, it is absolutely impossible as a defender to, to try and take hold of the ground again. Yeah. Well, that was the analyzer. Thanks to Pillar Products, who have you covered inside and out. Shutters, roller blinds, window film exclusively at Bunnings. And we saw a little bit in those credits as well. Zimily Farquharson was really getting on the end of some of those passages of play and she followed up her round three Rising Star nomination with another strong performance. And as always, thanks to Brighton Homes as we look at Brisbane, let life in and the good times begin. So, uh, Emily Bates is our nomination for the AFLPA MVP of the week. Thanks to Snaffle. You can cast your vote at aflpa.com.au. She had 22 disposals and a goal versus the Magpies. Is she one of the most underrated midfielders in the competition, Lib? Absolutely, Bryony. She is a humble, quiet achiever for Brisbane. And she's so consistent. And that means that she gets, she's seventh in the league for average disposals and seventh for contested possessions. And what makes her so good is that consistency. She doesn't have up and down games. You know what you're going to get and her teammates know what she's going to deliver on game day. And I think she's an incredible leader for the Brisbane Lions. She has been there since in inception. Yeah. And she has really been a huge part of not only their premiership, but pro possibly uh, them getting some more premierships in the future. Yeah, very well deserved. And that is our vote for the AFLPA MVP of the week. Thanks to snaffle.com.au. And as we head to the break, let's take a look at the AFLW Rising Star nominees from round four. Thanks to NAB supporting footballers from AFL Auskick to the big time. <laughs> Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. Let's take a look now at the goal of the week for Underworks, Serious About Sport. Now, this is the goal of the week here, Libs. Uh, Ebony Antonio. Jeez, it was good, wasn't it? Oh, so strong. You see here, a great player always keeps their feet and a fantastic finish at a really, really difficult angle there. But And she loves it, doesn't she? <laughs> And, and what a goal at such a huge moment as well. Yeah, absolutely. And she's been a huge performer over the last couple of weeks. But just the poise to keep pushing that ball in front and the clean pick up there and finish 
terrific and just shows that she is one of the best players in the competition. Yeah, she's an absolute superstar. All right, Underworks knows Aussies are serious about sport. That's why they're rewarding Ebony Antonio's grassroots club with a new pair of Underworks sports socks for every single player. How fantastic is that? All right, now, Kiara Bowers has been handed a two-week suspension after an off-the-ball hit resulted in an injured jaw to Kirsty Lamb. Let's have a look at it thanks to Underworks Injury Report. All-day socks by Underworks pass every test. Pick up a pair and test them yourself, Liv. Yeah, this was big news from the week. It was. Kiara Bowers, she won the best and fairest, now ineligible for that yeah. award. And I must say, she was uh, in line for a uh, another Best and Fairest award with the way that she's performing. But as you can see here, Kirsty very ginger as she comes off and it looks like a really high contact shot. We don't have a lot of vision due to the camera angles, but two weeks is massive for Fremantle to lose a player like Bowers. Is two weeks, in your opinion, a justified suspension for that? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, many of us would have seen the behind the goals vision during the week and it was intentional contact and that's what they declared it. And I think two weeks is definitely something that, you know, obviously I can't comment on that, but it's, yeah. it's, it's something that I think is worthy uh, yeah. considering that it was head high contact yeah. and we know that we need to protect our players from concussion and it is very serious when you go for the head. And as, as a leader and a best player at, at Frio, mm. do you think, um, you know, she might need to show a little bit more restraint than what she did for, like, like an off-the-ball hit there? Yeah, I think it, it would be very disappointing to have a, a teammate do that. Uh, but I think the respect that Bowers has earned over the last few seasons and the way that she approaches her footy, she is tough and she is... Uh, a powerhouse of Fremantle. So I think that that gives her a tiny little bit of leeway uh, with her teammates, uh, just because she's just a legend of the game. Yep. But still, even so, very disappointing to miss such a superstar for two weeks. Yep. All right, we're going to take a very short break, so stick around. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We're going to take a look at this Sunday's, today's fixtures. Let's take a look at Witten Oval, the Bulldogs versus Richmond. Uh, 2020 number one draft pick Ellie McKenzie has been named for her first game for 2022 for Richmond. She's been rehabbing from a calf injury. Lib, who do you like? Richmond, but it'll be a very close game. Very close game. Icon Park, Carlton, Adelaide. Oh, tough one. <laughs> Adelaide. <laughs> and at North Hobart Oval, we've got North versus the Dockers. This will be another really close game, yeah, but agreed. I think uh, North Melbourne will get through. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for another episode of Women's Footy. Thanks to NAB. We will catch you next time. Thanks for joining me today, Liv. No, thanks for having me. Again. I've had an absolute ball with you and we'll catch you next time.